Hello everyone. Welcome once again to this self-knowledge course. Today we will see a very interesting topic. It is topic number 33 of the cycle of 50 conferences, which are the first part, or phase A, of this self-knowledge course that aims to give us the necessary tools to awaken our consciousness and really get to know ourselves. Today we will talk about two very interesting laws, which are the law of octaves and the law of entropy. The objective of studying this topic is for us to know how these two laws of force work, how they subject us, and how, by knowing them, we can use them to ascend. This, through the wise use of musical octaves, and through combating entropy, which is that law that always seeks to make us equal to the rest of humanity. So that, with this, we prevent descending on our path towards the intimate self-realization of our being, and that we can achieve that goal in one existence. Let's start by explaining what the law of octaves is. The law of octaves teaches us to ascend, it shows us where we stagnate, why, and how to continue ascending to the final goal as well as it allows us to understand how the laws of force work. The law of octaves or the current of sound, or current of life, are the same. If we look at the musical scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, we see that it consists of seven notes. And that, to go from a lower do to a higher do, it is necessary to rise one more octave. We will call this scale the current of life, in which all human beings are directly involved, as well as subjected by it. We see that, when we start singing a musical scale do, re, mi, when we reach the note, mi, we find the first pause, between the notes, mi, and fa. And then the next three notes, fa, sol, la, go together, but when we reach the note, la, we find a second pause, between, la, and si. And then moving to the note, si, we see that it is independent, and that to move to the upper do, we find the third pause between that C and that do that belongs to that higher octave. This implies that we are going to find three pauses in a musical scale. And this same thing happens with all the events of one's life. We will see that we will find those same three pauses whenever we strive to take anything from a lower level to a higher level. We are going to have to know how to give ourselves conscious impulses that allow us to break those pauses. And those impulses that will lead us to start any project, and that will allow us to break with those pauses, is what we will call a shock. To illustrate this, we could use the example of any company or business that we decide to undertake. To start it we will need an impulse, which can be the stimulus and capital to start that business, that will be our first shock. That first shock leads us to raise the first three notes on that scale, seeking to position that business in the market. But always, and inevitably, we are going to find that after starting, buying the equipment, the raw materials, the workers, etc., there will be a process of stagnation, of pause, perhaps in the difficulty of opening up a field in the market. If, faced with this pause, we do not give that company a second impulse or shock, which may involve making a new investment, or an effort in searching for relationships, clients, etc., that progress could stagnate, and little by little lose that strength, and return to the starting point. On the other hand, if we give that business a second boost, then it would rise to another point on that scale, in which the company or business would begin to produce, generate profits, etc. There it would be scaling the next three notes. But we will also reach a certain point, where we will face new difficulties that could lead to stagnation and regression, such as the competition that is already positioned in the market, the increase in the costs of raw materials, etc. And again, in order to continue moving up, we will be faced with the need to give a third, and then a fourth shock, until we can bring that business to a stable level. Just as we can see how this law is handled in relation to any endeavor we do, we could see it in a relationship we start. If we analyze it, we will see how gradually and inevitably these three pauses occur. And we will see that most relationships fail because they fail to overcome one of these inevitable pauses. So, we will see that law of octaves in everything in life. We will see it on a micro level, 
but we will also see it on a macro level in relation to our own existence and its purpose, which is to achieve the self-realization of the being. The rise in levels of consciousness also occurs in accordance with this law. And we will see that, on our path of ascension towards achieving the goal of our existence, we will find these pauses, and we must know how to give ourselves these conscious impulses, or shocks, in order to achieve the self-realization of our being in this existence. In us, the first shock occurs at birth, when inhaling the first breath, which is when the spark definitively enters the new body. Although this spark has been connected to the physical body by the silver cord during the nine months of gestation, entry occurs with that first breath of life. With that first shock we are entitled to the first three musical notes, Do, Re, and Mi. These are equivalent to the physical body, which represents the note Do, the vital body, which represents the note Re, and the sole principle that we all have, where 97% of our essence is trapped in the me. All this accompanied by a personality, with which we function in the physical world. With these three notes we grow, we reproduce, perhaps we achieve material or personal success, we grow old, and we die, without achieving any real and transcendental objective. Each existence could represent an opportunity to do the work of self-realization, if we gave ourselves a second shock that would allow us to continue ascending the musical notes of our existence. From the moment we reach me, we either continue climbing, or we return to the starting point. If we do not continue climbing, we will reach the moment of physical death, and by the law of return, we will return again to the starting point. And this is the most common thing, that we go through an entire existence without even finding the purpose of it, and that by law of entropy we all end up equal in the cemetery, having to return again and again, in different physical bodies, until we exhaust the 108 existences, or opportunities, with a human physical body. The vast majority of humanity never manages to transcend that first pause, we remain absorbed in the meaningless search for pleasures and successes, and in the attempt to escape pain and adversity. Here, we find the so-called third-day men, seen in the light of Genesis, fascinated with existence, hypnotized and without even knowing the reason for their existence. To transcend that first pause, we need to receive that which will give us that second shock, that impulse, that allows us to break that pause, and continue ascending the ladder towards our being. We have the possibility of giving ourselves that second shock by receiving the objective knowledge, the knowledge of the three factors of the revolution of consciousness, which are psychological death, spiritual birth, and sacrifice for humanity. There, we will discover that our existence has a much greater purpose than what we had seen until now. And there are really very few who, among so many pseudo-esoteric theories and schools that exist, manage to find pure knowledge. Out of a thousand who look for it, one finds it. But if we are that one among a thousand, who manages to find objective knowledge in an existence, at that moment two paths open up to us. Since, we either practice it, and continue moving forward, or we don't practice it, and we turn it into a belief. Some will receive this knowledge and take the path of the believer, they will have it as just another theory, they will not practice it. And, therefore, they will not use it as that impulse, or shock, to start moving up the next notes. Since, out of a thousand who find it, only one follows it. There are really very few who begin to practice knowledge, and who, thanks to the experimentation and verification of the knowledge, receive that second shock that allows them to begin to advance in the awakening of their consciousness and in the creation of their internal bodies. Those who take the path of the practical are those who begin to ascend through the notes Fa, Sol, and La. Since they will do the regeneration, through sex, of the first two bodies and will create their astral, mental, and causal bodies. Thus, becoming true men, with a true internal constitution. These are the ones who definitively create their human soul and become the so-called men of the sixth day, men made in the image and likeness of God. Thus, carrying out that process that is internally called Genesis, or creation from the waters, in the work of the ascension through the first mountain, which consists of the creation of the solar bodies. However, 
At that point the second pause occurs. At this point the first part of this work is just being completed, but when we begin the process of creating the causal body, we are presented with the test of the choice of the path. Here, we will have to choose between the path to Nirvana and the direct path. Nirvana is a very tempting path, where we will receive all the rewards for the hard work done up to that moment, and where we will have the right to live hundreds or thousands of years in the paradises of Nirvana, but having barely reached the level of men. And having to, sooner or later, return to the wheel of samsara to try to start the path again. Those who have taken this path have betrayed their intimate Christ, since only by taking the direct path can that force called Christ be born in us, which will take us from men or angels to supermen or resurrected masters. At that time, approximately 70% of consciousness has been rescued, almost all of our visible moon has been cleared. However, we still have alive all the defects related to our invisible moon, and the causal selves, or the seven seeds of the ego are alive. For only the Christ, in the work of the second mountain, can do the work of eliminating these selves in the inferior dimensions of planet Earth, thus releasing the totality of our essence. Unfortunately, the vast majority take the path to Nirvana. Of a thousand initiates who reach that point, 999 choose the path to nirvana fulfilling there the third part of that phrase of christ that concludes saying out of a thousand who follow me one is mine those who on the contrary choose at that moment to do the will of the father choosing the direct path will then have the right to unite with their divine soul represented by the buddhic body then that perfect marriage will happen which is the union between the human and the divine in us the human soul represented by a triangle that goes up, and the divine soul represented by a triangle that goes down. And when joined together, they form that six-point star, or Star of David, which is the star that announces the birth of Christ. Since, it is from this union between the human and the divine in us, that the Christ force will be born within us, represented by the atmic body. The third shock will be given to us by the birth of Christ. Since it is the force that will drive us to do the work of the second mountain towards self-realization. The work on the second mountain is the apocalypse, or the end by fire of all the subhuman elements that we have within us. With this third shock, we then overcome that second pause, and we have the right to the musical note C. The musical note C involves doing the work of the second mountain. On the second mountain, the solar bodies or vehicles will be transformed into vehicles of pure gold, so that the Christic force can incarnate in the man. And it is on the second mountain, where the entire process of the descent of our inner Christ to the inferior dimensions of planet Earth will take place, to completely eliminate even the last shadow of our ego, to eliminate the seeds of the ego that are the seven causal selves. Apocalypse internally means, end by fire, and refers to that moment in which our Christ, who as we spoke in Conference 28 represents the fire in us, will do that total work of psychological death. The process of eliminating the causal selves will constitute the third and last pause that we will find on our path towards self-realization. And to overcome that third pause and conquer that higher note do, it will be necessary to give oneself a fourth shock, which will occur at the moment in which the process of elimination of the causal selves is completed, which is dying in oneself. And then, the resurrection occurs as a new man, without any trace of ego. With this, culminating the work of the second mountain, and beginning the third mountain, which is the mountain of sacrifice for humanity. On the third mountain, the master will have to look for a disciple who will remain in charge of world teaching, since there must always be a master in charge of teaching knowledge on the planet. Also, you must convert those bodies of gold into bodies of light, so that the second birth can take place, where you will be born a second time, but now in the spiritual world. At that moment, the Christ unites with his Father, and the person becomes an absolute man, achieving full self-realization. When a person manages to advance from this lower note do to this higher note do, they are said to have been born a second time. That second birth would be to become a risen one. 
This alternative is open to all human beings, but it is absolutely necessary to know how to do the work and how to apply the three factors of the consciousness revolution. Birth, which involves doing the work of the first mountain, where the creation of the solar bodies will occur, through the recovery of the waters, or genesis. Death, which implies getting to do the work of the second mountain, where the total elimination of all psychological defects will occur, or apocalypse. And sacrifice for humanity, which implies getting to do the work of the third mountain, where he must, in order to join the Absolute again, find a disciple who is in charge of knowledge on the planet. The invitation is for us to encourage ourselves to carry out this process of ascent, and to wisely use the law of octaves, to ascend towards the final goal. We saw how this law of octaves is what will lead us to achieve that macro purpose of our existence, which is self-realization. However, we must learn to observe how this law is processed in our daily lives, since in the different tests that we face daily, and which are the ones that give us daily progress in our work, we will also find those three pauses. We have to learn to transcend those pauses, continually seeking to give ourselves those shocks or conscious impulses. We will see that, when we propose to do this work, and we begin to create a continuity of purposes in relation to a practice, for example, we decide to dedicate a daily time to the study of our psychological defects through meditation, we will see how resistance will immediately appear. Our ego will put these resistances on us, so that we do not advance in this work. We will feel laziness, ill will, confusion, doubt, etc., and we will have to constantly give ourselves those conscious shocks to gain momentum and overcome those pauses until we achieve stability in that practice. When we manage to overcome all the pauses, we will have great strength to carry out the practice every day and have a continuity of purposes. But if in any of these pauses we lose strength, we will see the setback, and we will have to make a double effort to push ourselves forward again. Let's now look at this other law, which is the law of entropy. This law is also called equalization law. Everything in this physical world is subject to this law. We see that if we put a pot full of hot water next to another full of cold water, we will see how the entropy precipitates. There is an exchange of heat and cold and finally both end up having the same temperature. And we see how if we put a rotten fruit among a group of fresh fruits, soon all the fresh fruits end up rotting, equaling the damaged one. That is what this law does, it will always tend to equalize us to the lowest, equalize all of us at the lowest possible vibrational level. But we must know that this law fulfills a very important function, and that is that it gives us the necessary resistance so that we can develop strength. We see that a person who wants to develop physical strength needs elements or weights that represent the resistance that will lead him to develop those muscles and the strength he requires. Likewise, to develop emotional, mental, and sexual strength, we need to learn to overcome our weaknesses by constantly overcoming the degenerating entropy. But it happens that no one knows how to use this law consciously, people usually give up at the first resistance they encounter. We like it easy, and the easiest thing is to descend. Millions of people are trapped in the path of entropy, since they do not work on themselves, they degenerate more and more, their minds atrophy, their energy centers are increasingly unbalanced, they are increasingly subject to vices, materialism, pornography, and violence. We can observe this law being processed in us, when we thoughtlessly want to do what everyone else does, what is popular. We live by looking at which series is the most popular to watch, we look for the fashionable celebrity to imitate, or we fall into the incessant search for pleasure and money, like everyone does. We can see how we fall into entropy when we see friends criticizing someone, or gossiping about someone's life, and we immediately join in, we want to find out what everyone is saying, and also give our opinion. We could also see it when we come home in a good mood, and we find that there is a fight between our relatives, and that irritates us, and we end up upset and furious, and we fail to observe how the law of entropy made us equal to the environment. The problem with entering entropy 
is that we lose the impulse we had to advance in our inner work, and moved by this law, we all end up the same. We always end up reaching the end of our life without having gone through a process of liberation and awakening of our consciousness. And it doesn't matter if we manage to accumulate a lot of fame or wealth, and if when we die, we are buried in a golden coffin, or if we die poor and are buried in a simple wooden box. We will end up as bony, one as the other. The law of entropy immolates us all in Tartarus. And all things are marked under the law of entropy, it is found in everything. We see the seas turned into garbage dumps, the rivers polluted, the fish dying. The atmosphere contaminated by smog, the adulterated fruits of the earth. That is the law of entropy. And all humanity is going down that path. So, how are we going to avoid falling further into entropy? How are we going to overcome this resistance and advance our level of inner work in higher octaves? Well, only through transformation is it possible to overcome entropy, and we achieve transformation when we are willing to sacrifice our egoic desires, which are the ones that always put us in entropy. When we are able to observe what is the defect that is acting inside us, and that wants to lead us to lose strength, to make mistakes, be it laziness, greed, lust, anger, envy, whatever. And we eliminate it, is how we achieve transformation. It is worth remembering here what we learned in the previous conference in which we talked about radical change. Once we have identified a defect within ourselves, we must decide to be radical and never feed it again. If we sacrifice desire, if we refuse to feed the ego, then the result is transformation, it is freedom. Our strength is trapped in desire, and when we deny ourselves, when we sacrifice desire, then we regain the strength to keep moving forward. The result of the sacrifice of our defects will always be the development in us, of the virtue contrary to the defect. If anger is sacrificed, the precious jewel of gentleness appears. If the desire for money, the unbearable greed, is sacrificed, altruism will be born in us. If envy is sacrificed, philanthropic energy will manifest in us, the desire to work for others, and the joy for the good of others will also manifest. Therefore, there can be no transformation without sacrifice. Likewise, for the person who sacrifices their sexual impulses, the result of that energy is the creation of the existential bodies of the being. If the eyes are sacrificed, if all of them are destroyed, the result of that sacrifice will be the energy released, which will give rise to the deep inner man. This is how you escape degenerating entropy. But it happens that people don't really want to sacrifice, we don't really understand what sacrifice is. And we have to start by sacrificing our feelings. One discovers that of all the things to which we are most attached, what hurts us the most to let go are our sufferings. People are willing to sacrifice their pleasures, even their vices and their money, they would sacrifice everything, but not their sufferings and pains, because they love them very much. And suffering is that strong resistance which always leads us to lose any strength with which we intend to advance in any aspect. It is simply observing ourselves when we are in a state of melancholy, sadness, depression, anguish, resentment, anger, etc. And observe how we tend to revel in that state, how we search our minds for more justifications and excuses to continue feeding those feelings within us. Suffering takes us to the lowest vibrational levels and makes us lose all the spirit and strength to seek to awaken our consciousness. So, if we start by sacrificing our feelings, our sufferings, we can take a big step to overcome the law of entropy. That is why we must never admit suffering to stay in ourselves. We should never think about suffering. When one sacrifices his sufferings, when he eradicates from himself the eyes that produce them, and the sufferings remain sacrificed, since the eye of suffering must be eradicated, that energy that results from there's transformation. Because a different man is born, who overcomes the law of entropy. Finally, I want to mention something regarding sacrifices and how they serve as an impetus to move forward. 
We must keep in mind that when we sacrifice ourselves for others, when we help others so that they also awaken their consciousness, and so that they can also transform and advance spiritually, we receive in return a lot of strength to be able to advance in our own inner work. That love that we demonstrate by working for the good of others in a selfless way, pays off with strength for us to advance in our inner work. I remind you that, there can be no transformation without sacrifice. And well, this was today's topic. Thank you to those who have watched this conference. I hope it has helped you learn how to develop the strength to do your own work. I invite you as always to our next conference. That conference is a complement to the topic we have seen today, since in this one we saw how to develop strength for work, and in the next conference, entitled, The Permanent Center of Gravity, we will see how to achieve a continuity of purposes. That, so that we can dedicate our entire existence to inner work, achieving a permanent center of gravity around our consciousness. Until next time.